This is a Wave Podcast. Reinventing Ourselves Career Journeys is a podcast series that showcases real-life stories of people who have successfully reinvented themselves through their careers. People who have overcome adversity, found new purpose, explored new horizons, and followed their passion. Hi, welcome to Reinventing Ourselves. I'm Eric Major. Vanya worked for many years as a research biologist in remote areas of Brazil, but her master's and doctoral degrees did not guarantee her career opportunities in Flintflon, Manitoba. There were many comings and goings through different small towns in Western Canada following her husband's career. And with each new place, even in small towns, there was already a good support system in place, Service Canada. Graduating as an ESL English teacher with the support of Service Canada was a very suitable solution for her pace of life. Today she runs an online business teaching English as a second language to other immigrants. Reinventing Ourselves Career Journeys. Hello, I'm Lori, your host for another episode of Reinventing Ourselves Career Journeys. Today we'll be exploring the career of Vania, an ESL teacher, that's English as a second language, based in Kamloops, British Columbia. Hello, Vanya, and welcome. Hello, Laurie. I'm very happy to be here. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? I am from Sao Paulo, Brazil, a very big city. I went to school at the University of Sao Paulo. I studied biological sciences. At that time, I lived in a big city, so I wanted to go to a smaller city. So I moved away from Sao Paulo. So I was in Ribeirão Preto. And then I finished my degree and I was already looking for adventures <laughs> as a biologist. I like field work. So I went to Panama at the time as a, like a, a trainship in Panama at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute. So well, let's talk about some of those highlights of your early work as a researcher. You certainly invested heavily in your education. I know you completed a Master of Science and a PhD to become a biologist. Perhaps you could tell us just a little bit about, yeah, your adventures. Uh, I ended up going to U.S. eventually, and I did my master's degree there. And then I worked a little bit in U.S., and then I returned to Brazil. But I returned to Brazil. There was a project, the Golden Lion Tamarind Project, with the Smithsonian as well. Then I returned to Brazil, worked in that project for a while. And then I got a job with the Brazilian Agency for agricultural research. That's when I end up later, I mean, I worked with this agency some years there, and then I end up later on going to U.S. again, <laughs> which is later. <laughs> okay, and I understand that it was while you were in the U.S. that you met your husband, and that was the beginning of your connection with Canada. Yes, exactly. That's how I end up in Canada. <laughs> was more, I mean, I was already a researcher, but uh, was a romantic reason coming to Canada. Then uh, my husband lived in Flinflon, Manitoba. You know, I came directly from Brazil and moved to Flinflon. <laughs> It's not exactly the thriving metropolis that is Sao Paulo, that's for sure. No, no. At the time, actually, I was working in Brazil in a remote area as well. So it didn't seem strange to me because I was working as a biologist in Corumbá, in the Pantanal wetlands. Yeah, so there was like, hey, well, I know that it's difficult sometimes going from one country to another. And even my husband said, well, maybe you can work in, at the company because he used to work at the mining company there because they do some uh, water testing and things like that. But there was also at the time, the um, I don't know if you remember that first grow up, uh, marijuana grow up operation was in Flint Flon. I don't know if you are aware of that. So I, I was not aware. <laughs> so I worked that operation. <laughs> Even though like Flinflon is a very small city and before I got the job, I worked as a substitute teacher also at the school. So that was very interesting. Okay, what did you do when you got to Flinflon in the first place to tackle the job market? They had a Service Canada office there. So my husband mentioned to me and I said, yes, I'll go there. <laughs> 
Service Canada is the program operated by Employment and Social Development Canada to serve as a single point of access for the Government of Canada's largest and most heavily used programs, such as the Social Insurance Number, the Employment Insurance Program, the Old Age Security Program, and the Canada Pension Plan. Service Canada centres also accept applications for Canadian passports. Since I was already a professional and going to start again, applying for a job, over there they had a workshop sometimes for learning how to apply to jobs in Canada because, you know, we are in a different country, you have to learn how to do that. Then also they had practicing interviews in the workshops. They helped me to prepare my resume, prepare portfolio. So it was very useful. Started applying. <laughs> so I started getting my jobs here in Canada. And were you applying, Vanya, to positions in your field of biological research or were you investigating other opportunities? I started my own field. That's when I got the job. It wasn't exactly, but this was biological in um, prior plant systems. That was the name of the company that had the marijuana grow up. I never really worked with marijuana, but it was a kind of biological type of work. But later on, we moved to Winnipeg. And that's when I went again to a Service Canada office. I got a, the opportunity of taking this uh, ESL certificate. So every time we moved, I go to Service Canada office and they would help me with ideas for different careers too. If you don't get something in your field, <laughs> you can try something else. <laughs> That's really good to know that Service Canada was there for you. Wherever you landed, you had some support and some help. Do you think that most people are familiar with all of the services that they provide? I don't think so. Like um, in my case, like my husband mentioned, and I went. And then I realized from the beginning that there are a lot of services. It's very good. People should be aware that they can count on Service Canada for their career here in Canada, especially when you are an immigrant. You need to find out how it is because sometimes maybe in your country is a little bit different the way you apply or what you write in your resume. It's uh, very uh, useful. I did read as well that there were some career funding grants that you were able to take advantage of. Yes, that was in Winnipeg as well. We moved twice. We went to Winnipeg, then we went to a small town, then we came back to Winnipeg. So the first time in Winnipeg, since I have a PhD, so they gave me a letter that the government would pay half of my salary if a company hired me. Sometimes they're not sure about who you are, so I had that backup on the government, and I got a job there. That was the first time but then later on my husband had to move again then we went to this small town and then when he came back to Winnipeg again actually I met the same people and they were like where were you <laughs> <laughs> because in seven years like we stayed in the little town that's when they said maybe you'd like to try to go to school again you always have to be kind of dating yourself too and then I thought it was interesting become a ESL teacher so there again they helped me they paid half of take the ESL course and then I did at the University of Winnipeg and then now I'm teaching online <laughs> How did you go from finishing off the certificate to setting yourself up as an online teacher? I remember talking to the coordinator of the course. He was saying, if you don't get a job like in a company or something like that, for sure online. Well, every time my husband moves, then goes the job. So I thought maybe I should be online. <laughs> then uh, I started applying and I think I still finishing the course and I got the job already online. And then also I had the opportunity to be a tutor at a company in Winnipeg, even now that I'm here, I'm still tutoring there in Winnipeg because my name is with the university. So they provide who would be, like to be online tutoring. And it was perfect for the moment because we didn't know about COVID that was coming. <laughs> it was happening a little bit before COVID. So it was like perfect, you know, even during the COVID crisis, I was always working. It has been really good. That's incredible. It sounds like, as you say, a little ahead of your time, but in responding to necessity, you actually created an ideal solution for your adventurous self. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Both my husband and I, we are both adventurous. <laughs> The online possibility is very good, especially now that happened with COVID. And I know a lot of people are exploring other careers as well. In my case, since I already know English, I had been to school in US and Canada. It's perfect. <laughs> and 
And I understand that you're also running a sales business online. Yes. Well, this is the beginning in the small town in Flin Flon. We started a, a business that I import crafts from Brazil. We always had that. Instead of using the garage for putting the car, we use the garage to be a little store. <laughs> We end up having a website as well that we still have it. It's perfect for my husband and myself. <laughs> and how do you import the merchandise from Brazil? Well, I know the crafters, so sometimes they send to me, or sometimes when I go visit my family, I bring some. It's not a, like a huge business. It's very small, but it keeps me connected to the Brazilian culture. I kind of enjoy that too. And then in a way, I help the crafters there too. It works very well. And then the, the Canadians also are curious about the the crafts <laughs> so it's very good well it sounds like it's a win-win you've got everything organized to fit your lifestyle and also to give you some work-life balance that is so important to us to everyone these days yes like i mentioned in the beginning i was born in the big city but i never really liked that lifestyle so i was always going to a smaller and smaller now I end up living in flinflon which is quite small you have more time to do exercise to you know i love nature so i can go for my walk when i lived in flinflon i love to go for a walk with my dog sometimes we see a bear from far away <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I love nature. That's why for me personally, my husband too, like he loves nature. We always like to be not in very big centers. We prefer smaller places. And Canada has you know, a lot of uh, beautiful sceneries and places that you can live in, in smaller towns. In South America or even in Brazil, a lot of times people go to Sao Paulo because that's where the jobs are. I don't think there's a lot of life quality there. So yeah, it's a good life here. It sounds like you have been able to combine your entrepreneurial self and adventurous spirit with some quality life and a profitable business. So congratulations to you. Thank you. <laughs> having done all this and having had the level of success that you have, what advice would you offer to someone who wanted to maybe reinvent themselves in the same way? For sure, look for Service Canada. In here in Canloops, they have an um, economic development office from the city. So you can always go to this type of uh, agencies and they are there to help you. If you want to open a business, they have all the statistics. So there are courses actually. So don't be stuck in what you were before coming. Just to use what you have, your skills and Keep going. <laughs> Beautiful. Great advice. I want to say thank you very much for sharing your personal story with us. Thank you so much. Reinventing Ourselves Career Journeys is realized by BRZ Group, Inc. This project was made possible through the generous support of Ontario Creates. For more Wave podcasts, go to waveplus.ca.